in terms of testing for CLL, additional testing, of course, diagnostically, it's generally not a challenge. It's, it's very straightforward. A, uh, a test that we call flow cytometry on a blood sample is usually sufficient to establish the diagnosis. Very, very uncommonly would a bone marrow exam uh, be needed, for example. And in routine practice also, we don't uh, necessarily get CT scans uh, to uh, establish a diagnosis or even uh, to, as people say, stage the disease. It really isn't uh, necessary in most cases. Um, however, we do have a staging system that correlates with the extent of the disease, and that's simply based on our exam and uh, blood counts. Um, but uh, people also want more information. They want to know how they're going to do specifically. So we can add additional tests, uh, genetic testing as people often uh, call it, that can further subdivide uh, individuals into, into groups that give you additional information about how you might do, uh, meaning if you're without symptoms and an observation is recommended, you want to know, well, how long is it going to be before I need treatment? Although our staging system gives that information, we can refine that further. One test is the so-called FISH test, which looks at specific chromosome abnormalities. And the second test that's generally used is called the IGHV mutation assay. That's really looking at what's called the mutational status of your immunoglobulin genes. So it's really those two broad categories that are most relevant. Uh, now, we don't necessarily advocate doing that testing on everyone at the time of diagnosis. Um, certainly and not everyone who is without symptoms where we've already decided that treatment is not indicated. So as you can imagine, you, you could do that testing and you might come up with a profile that's less favorable. And then instead of the watch and wait approach, or as uh, folks like to call it, watch and worry approach, uh, you worry even more. Uh, but then of course, if you have a favorable profile, then you're, you're happier, you're more pleased. However, we don't do anything differently, regardless of what those tests show, at least at current state, um, compared to a decision that's already been made about treat or not treat. We do, however, strongly advocate getting that testing at the time of treatment, and sometimes repeating some of the testing uh, with subsequent treatment uh, when you require treatment, say, a, a second time uh, in some cases. So very important to have a, a discussion about these uh, tests and, and what information you will get from them. Well, we'll often see patients who are coming for another opinion about their disease. Perhaps they've been recently diagnosed and they uh, have been advised uh, for observation. So it's, of course, natural to ask whether that's a reasonable approach. Uh, and in that context, uh, other testing often comes up in the conversation. Perhaps they've had the, the testing done, the FISH and the mutational testing, and they want to know what it means. Or, or actually, we see some results that have been obtained, and, and we ask them about it. And, and uh, there's very often uh, confusion or, uh, or really lack of information about what they mean. So. Um, we, we really try to discuss that issue, that issue of testing with each and every patient, uh, whether or not they've had it done, really trying to let them know what it means. Uh, and that way they're fully informed. And in some cases, people feel very strongly that they would like to have it done, even though they realize that we're not gonna act on it at that point. So I think uh, pretty much for all patients, it should be part of the uh, initial discussion. Again, in terms of genetic testing or these, these tests that I, I, I discussed, uh, it's important to understand what information they, they give you so uh, you understand why your physician may be making a distinction between one therapy versus another. It is very, very important uh, to get that testing if somebody is talking about using chemotherapy, for example. Hopefully that's quite, quite uncommon. Uh, but with our newer agents, um, we know that they work broadly despite those other uh, features. And nevertheless, um, I think it's, it's important for a patient 
to at least expect a discussion about these tests. Uh, we're not asking you to go to your physician and ask that they be done in all cases, but really understand uh, perhaps why your physician recommended that they not be done at that particular time. Thank you.